Welcome to Turn Extension, a supplemental podcast for the Advanced Maneuvers YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Turn Extension. My name is Tony or Polar Bear Cub on the forums. Hey everybody, it's Devin, Cutthroat Cure on the forums. And this so, is Todark. That is not Todark. <laughs> <laughs> Two words, Toad Park. So, Kevin is currently somewhere else at the moment, um, but he might be dropping in in the middle of his cast, but... Anyways, we had said, hey, we were going to not cast for about two weeks, and then the day after Turn Extension dropped, the errata dropped as well. So The day the day that Turn Extension dropped, it came out. No, Turn Extension drops on the Tuesday. It came out on Wednesday. I thought, was it? I thought it was that Tuesday. No, Are no, you on this cast? What? Are you even on this cast? No, like, no when you release your shit. Yeah. We oh, I know on... when we released it. I thought that I thought the uh, Errata released on Tuesday. I feel like you're at least no. Errata definitely released on Wednesday. All it's right, been there two we go. days of craziness. All right. Anyways, oh so such professionalism. Yeah, dude, that's what we are. We are the pinnacle of professionalism. Anyways, so Doubt Arc is not here right now, but luckily with the Errata, we got a partisan, so we decided to take a minion instead, and that's why we've got Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so ugly. <laughs> I mean, What's he has up, a, guys? he has some little points left over, but that's okay. <laughs> a few points. <laughs> so, Anyways. of course, today we are discussing the errata, and we are going to try and leave as much salt out of this uh, undertaking as possible. So, I did not uh, sign up for that at all. Well, that's why we didn't bring. Um, that's why we allowed you on here and didn't bring Kevin. <laughs> that's true. There's a chance Kevin might be in the salt mine still. We're not quite sure. We will definitely see. Yeah. All right. So let's get this started. Uh, Devin, you want to start us off then? Sure. So do we want to start? So. Let's just quickly, because I've got the errata document in front of me, let's just go over first the War Machine Prime and Primal major changes um, in general, and then we can start going into our thoughts on the faction-only ones. Okay. So let's start so, with the flight one. Yeah. So the wording just on that is re no yeah, replace the second sentence of flight with the following. It can advance through obstructions and other models if it had enough movement to completely move past them. It's just correcting um, a little ambiguous, um, some ambiguous wording that people were kind of focusing on, so. Okay, that's simple enough. So they did the same with melee range, and they did the same, um, with the, yeah, they did the same with melee range. Now, there was a change to power attacks, where a model cannot target a friendly model with a power attack. Has been added. Bullshit. So I'm guessing you don't like that change. In the whole of the game, it's a good change, but all they just did was buff Una. Why because would that? Now you can't oh. slam your own things into her uh, griffins to knock them down. Well, if you have spells, you can still do it. Like uh, if you have access to um, force hammer, force hammer. That's or true. Thunder shock, like strike, or something like that. Spell. Huh? Hey, I'm just saying. To if knock you're in down one Ragnar. out of six. Ragnar is completely fine. All I've got to do is hit one of them with his stuff, and they're getting knocked down. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's knocked down. Everybody knocked down for days. Um, My point is, is that it it takes away a lot of depth and counterplay. I, I, and they did it to fix throwing, and rather than fixing the laser throws and the snake, which I was fine with them taking away the snake slap face. But, mm. um, yeah, we try to make that as sexual as possible. <laughs> but to just hit everything is sweeping and an overreaction, and it takes away a lot of creativity from actual positioning and tactics. It does make me sad that I can no longer spawn a servitor with a prime at Axiom and then chuck it at something. You can't knock down a, a Haley 3 as easily now. <laughs> That's fair and balanced, though. No, it's not. <laughs> Dude, she's what? Only, like, defense 19 sometimes. 
Just 18 to 20. So she's only 18 yourself. to 20. That's totally reasonable. I want you to go sit on a <laughs> entire row of dildos. <laughs> Can be like the uh, the the, uh, the better spikes. You just we'll you call just it a gauntlet. It? The gauntlet of dildos. The yeah. God. Yep. You have to God. get each one off. Got oh painful. You just, <laughs> you just oh god, that is coming back to bite us. <laughs> yeah, that is. Oh, all right. <laughs> so holistically, it's probably better for the game, but it removes a lot of creativity counterplay. It, it does. I, I agree with that. I, I think it's it, it is a weird change to 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 that. Big of a change. I mean, because that's that was a really not integral part, but you saw that happen a lot. Where you know you'd really have to if your cat if your opponent had a really thick wall, really high defense, you thinking outside of the box to use your own models to knock stuff down was it was kind of fun at times, and that that does pull it back a lot. Where that was the basis for Tuffalo bowling, wasn't it? Yeah, I am so glad that Tuffalo got nerfed by this, just because <laughs> I hate Tuffalo. <laughs> That's the sole reason, actually. Yep, fine with that. Actually, that was a big... I heard that was a big... Oh, I didn't see it because, obviously, I haven't been playing in a little bit. Um, that was a big thing with the Mad Dog spam as well, was that they would be bowling Mad Dogs across the uh, across the table. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, I mean, basically, you run a Mad Dog up, you'd slam it into a, a Warp Wolf, then you'd be able to kill it. So, I mean, all this really is is a buff to circle. That's true. And Box obviously, circle. being the bottom of the barrel, they needed it. But and honestly, let's let's think about this. Like, yes, it's a sacrifice on a lot of people's, you know, on for a lot of factions. Because I mean, we did a lot of things with it. But this also does fix um, some other, you know, fun issues, such as um, uh, the snake that fixed the whole flying snake. That's true. No I was really circus. hoping that you were going to go super old school and bring up Dragon Ball. Dragon I thought Ball. we were going to go really old school and bring up the Flying Pegasus from Mark One. Wasn't Flying Pegasus also Dragon Ball? They're just different names for the same thing. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, but definitely, I, I definitely think that a lot. You know, it's a sacrifice. You know, for a lot of factions because it was something fun, but it's needed. You know, it's definitely needed. It does make it easier for new players as well. That is a positive. It, it does. That, that is, that that is a big I will grudgingly thing. allow to escape from the mines of Salt Moria. <laughs> Just for a moment. Just for a moment. That could be like... A it's a soul troll! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to make a bow rod with Hungerford's face on it. Oh I have God. a... I have been... A, my next tournament that I'm going to, I'm going to wear my salt troll shirt. Oh, there you go. go. That'll be awesome. So, right. so anyway, moving we along. got so spray attacks was just wor rewording. <laughs> yeah, they got buffed. Yeah, um, massive. That was a big one. That was a massive change. <laughs> 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 spray attacks and you skip it. <laughs> Jesus, this is gonna um, be a so, lot of puns, isn't it? Colossals and gargantuans can no be no longer be affected by grievous wounds. End of story. Which is awesome. I like that. Yeah, I'm excited about yeah. that. Um, it gives them. It gives both the colossals and the gargantuans a little bit more for their point cost, and I like that. Mm -hmm. It's a fine change. It just also reinforces how bad they are for the game. Hey, I see. I go back and forth on it. They are bad for the game because you've now created an entire class and model that removes the interaction of a lot of rules, and it's a pain in the butt to move them around the table. There's a lot so. of things. It's, it's a fine, it's a fine buff to them. It, I really don't care because I only run one round them anyway. Well, that's but upsetting. That's playing your turn right, and they're not a problem. Warhogs, warhogs are a thing. No, Rush and Brian. Ugh. With Midas. Ugh. Warhogs don't have enough attacks. It's the number of attacks you put into them, and I think Rush and Brian can get up to like nine. Is that really? Right? Yeah, because they charge for free. They have three initials, four buys, and a targ. So eight. Oh. I fucking hate good. minions. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking much. Is it, is they it can minions be... or is it Gaston? Because right. I'm definitely going with Gaston. <laughs> yeah, because like I'd be like, oh, hey, look, I have my fucking Stormwall that's like armor 22 right now because I fucking put 
uh, some nice little arcane shelter. He's like, oh, I'm going to fucking run one round it. Oh, and I'm mad because I only just killed it with only three attacks left over. Fuck you. Yep, sounds like Gaston. Why don't you go run the god again? Yep, I go will. run the god. I will go run the god. Alright. So, so, the next, so that was a, kind of a big one. There was some wording changing to impact attacks. Which, not big, once again, getting rid, rid of some ambiguity. Yeah, doesn't matter. Boom. So, next page, power attacks, massive. Next page, same thing. Um, there was a little bit of change to uh, wording to threshold and frenzy. Yeah, that's what's going. What's the change? So you got to use your most powerful melee attack. Correct. So, which is how it was in Mark Two. Um, they just didn't, they didn't drop that into Mark Three. So this just kind of brings it back. So people were um, trying to loophole a uh, gunfighter, I think. Interesting. Oh, be- that's interesting. So, um, melee range with some wording. We already knew that was coming, and boom. So now we're into Signar. All right. Signar first. So, the first biggest change is to Captain Alistair Kane. So now instead yep. of his uh, attacks just normal, he can, instead of him have, have, being able to choose one of the three, he knows it's been a focus point. First thing for me, I love Kane too. I, I thought he was an amazing caster. Reality is, he was way too good for his points. He is the one, he is the only caster in the game that could use all of his focus to shoot his shots. So he had a potential of nine shots if he had, if he had Squire. And he could also trick shot every single shot beforehand. Yes, Una to or Tuna could uh, could 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 do that as well, but she only has a maximum of three shots. You know, to be able to get an, an additional uh, attack, attack type onto her weapons. So I mean, it's a hard change, but I, I really think it's it's the right change for him. He was too far out there. Now, do you think that the Signar community feel the same way? Like, or do you think that? Just... <laughs> so, I, they... <laughs> so is he an F or a G now? He's G for straight up gangster. <laughs> um, according to the forums, he's absolute unplayable garbage. <laughs> of course he is. Of course he is. Same with everything else in Signar. You're gonna yeah, notice that, that today. Really Tone down that long range assassination. You're going to notice that everything that we talk about today has officially gone from an A-caster to unplayable garbage, according to the forums. That's true. Well, hang on, hang on. According to Signar. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. No, I, I, so it's, it's interesting because, because you could see a lot. It's, on the forums, obviously, it's not necessarily the best place to go to, especially times like this. This has been... This has been, I will say, the, a really hard errata for a lot of people, and there's been a lot of anger on the forums. And the one piece of feedback I would give to everybody and anybody listening to this cast is if you're posting on the official forums, just please do it in a constructive manner. If you start attacking people, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get in trouble. Having attacked people on the forums, you really don't get in that much trouble. Go ahead, it's fine. But as but as a moderator, it makes your guys' life harder, correct? It does. It does. This I mean, is your chance. You you too can help put down a polar bear cup. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks a lot, man. You can pick up a baby seal and beat a bit polar it's bear like, cub today. It's like those like sad animal commercials, but in reverse, where it's like now you can be beating this polar bear cub. <laughs> For the low cost of one angry comment a day. For one, yeah, one <laughs> overly aggressive comment a day. You too can make polar bears life a little bit harder. No, but um. So, but like, so, but th- this is so. But anyways, going back to my original point. So, I- I've seen some people post really positive things, just like, "Hey, look, Kane really did need to be reined in." Obviously, there's the other stream stream where people think that he is now. I, I've seen some people say he is the worst caster in Signar now, which I think is just blatantly untrue. I'm sorry. He yeah, is I don't not understand. I don't know how caster. you. I don't understand how they even get it. close. 
How and I just don't understand how people how people got to that. Like literally, the only thing they did was change how his attacks work. He's still got a fantastic spell list. He still can put something down. You know, he's just not going to be able to kill your entire front line and then your caster. Yep. And then and even with this, his feet just getting reined in just a little bit. It was just really a wording change to make it so it's a plus one commit on a spell on a spell storm pistol attack damage rolls. So that just Brings in line as well. So let's say you use the empowered shot. You're afraid someone's going to be a little tough. You grievous wounds the shot, the first shot, so you have eight shots instead of nine. Now, that's still pretty good. Yeah. Kane is exactly the same as he was before. If he's good into the matchup, he's good into the matchup. If he's bad into the matchup, he's going to die. And, and that's true. It, it effectively, Nothing it, has changed. And effectively, it, it gives him the exact same uh, strength as, as Mark II. It's, I, I still think he's still stronger than his Mark II version. Cause he now, is because he has Grievous Wounds, which cause is he has, aggravating his shit. Yeah, because he has Grievous Wounds. That's awesome. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I, I'm completely fine with it. And, I mean, and let's be honest, all of his major predators, for the most part, they also suffered the same sort of... Uh, you know, fate, where they had something removed a little bit from them, so... Yep. Alright, so... But hey, you know what? It's a nerf to Signar, so it's a win for everybody else. Exactly. I guess that's true. That's true. So the next one is uh, Captain Darius. So his big thing is that uh, his crane was changed, so now he cannot uh, crane over um, battle engines. So, oh well. A little sad, but whatever. I thought it was a knockdown change on that. Um... Well, the biggest the thing word, is now, it, it the, says... Uh, the exact wording is, once per turn, at any time during its activation, this model can choose one other friendly, large-based, or smaller model w within two inches of it. You can place that model anywhere completely within two of its current location, and if it is knocked down, it immediately stands up unless it became knocked down this turn. I thought it, the change was the unless it became knocked down this turn. Um, it could be that, but the other change was before, I believe, he could also... He, he used to be able to um, move battle engines as well, I believe. Um, and I think they those? added the large base. I, I can't pull it up anymore. I don't have the... Uh, I never bought the deck of cards. And War What's Room had updated. Engine? Huh? What's a battle engine? Get out of here. You have a meat thresher. It's actually a good yeah. one. Didn't it yeah, meat? it's fantastic sitting on my shelf. This is not a good one. It's horrible. You're horrible. I see we... It is statistically, mathematically, the worst choice you can make in any decision. That is not true. Um, as I read on the Playing forums, Sigmar. actually, math can only get you so far. Yeah, those are the same people who brought us Una. Math is a lie, and it's Tuna. <laughs> yeah, Tuna, goddammit. All right, next, Victoria Haley. Two things happened to her. One, her point call, her, uh, Warjack points were reduced to 27. And then what the, were they at before? I believe, 28. Yeah, it's 28, I think. Oh wow! They took away one. Uh, what? Hey. Why do you think? Why do you think that? All right. So let me ask you this: Why do you think that happened? Because. Hurricane. Oh really? Yeah. Wait. What? How many points is the hurricane? I have no idea. I just said that. No, the hurricane oh. is like thirty-seven points or something. There's no. It's like one point less than the uh, storm storm wall. So that's what I'm wondering. Why do you think that this one point warjack change? came in because that was one of the things when I read through this that it was like twenty eight. Like I was thinking maybe she was like thirty two, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's the same thing that they had said before was that they're gonna adjust points if they think a caster is too powerful. So clearly on, on, on some form they thought Haley two Haley one was too strong, so they pulled her points down a little bit instead of twenty eight to twenty seven. Which doesn't seem like a lot, but on the other hand, if you raise a if you raise a, a warjack's point cost by one point, um, people you know you can see like the, the 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 negative swing on that. So that that was that was, but unfortunately that wasn't the only hit she took. And not to mention, let's be honest, they didn't raise the points on any jacks in Signar. So no, they didn't. No. Now, why are you saying unfortunately that's the only hit she took? Because well, I'm saying that if that's why we're thinking it might be happening is because they raised the points so that she could take less, that didn't happen. No, I'm saying, unfortunately, it's not the only hit she took because she also lost a big part of a lot of her gameplay. And granted, it was a lot of neg negative play experience. I'm not, I would never argue that it was not negative play experience. But it was aggravating as shit. It, it was. And, and I'm not saying it, it wasn't. What, but what they did was... 
So if you're inner controller, you're minus two defense uh, for a temporal barrier. It's it's a four focus cost. If you're inner control area, it's minus two defense. But now if you are beginning your activation in her command range, she's at minus two speed. Now for me personally, and I said this when we weren't recording, I'm gonna say it again. I would have preferred them just to drop a minus two speed altogether and then lower that point cost to a three focus or I know it wouldn't go down to a two focus, but even a three focus would have been understanding. I, I, I still am under the, the feeling that within her command range is an eight inches, you have to start in there. That is that that is painful. Because yes, you can have the centurion blocking, so you can negate some of the, the, the charges, but that's that but is still really if you think hard. about it, even if you're speed five, let's say speed five, yep. um and you go up to eight and you're in, you're just within that eight inches. Mm-hmm. Then you're not getting to her because you have probably if just you have dropped. Reach, though, then you do. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I'm sorry, not reach. If you have two inch melee range, then you do. Or if yeah, you, I know you, I know you have powerful guns, then you can still. So that, that, that's that. That's kind of where I'm at. It's like you know, it's I, I, I get it. You know, they had to do something to it because it was really painful to play against. And I'll admit it because I, I abused the shit out of Temporal Barrier whenever I would play it. I would, it would be up every single damn turn. Do you that remember was it was the bane game. of, it was the bane of Crix's existence. The bane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because back in the day when you're minus two speed, you couldn't charge. Yep, yeah. And no. that's, yeah, that was huge. You used to not be able to charge at all. And, you know, and, and, Temporal Barrier has gone through a lot of changes throughout the entire existence of, uh, of of the spell. Even going back to the days of Mark One, it went through I think two or three reincarnations in Mark One alone. It's kind of an indication that you need to just pink it and put something else in its place. And and I and I think it's a hard thing. Is it's 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 her signature spell, and what do you do with it? And I there's no such thing as signature spells anymore. Hey, it yeah, is, star-crossed. Look. Oh, on wrong eye, it is a signature spell. Oh, oh yeah, fuck both that's y'all. true. Yep, Starcrossed on a wrong eye, the best spell. Starcrossed belonged to one person. That was her wrong signature eye. spell. But I will definitely say that one of the things that I did mention in an earlier cast is that you know I would only be okay with wrong eye having Starcrossed once Temporal Barrier got fucked with. And guess what? He got fucked with. <laughs> yep. So, so. I gotta be, I've got to be okay with it now. Yeah, I'm so. okay with it only affecting uh, friendly faction models. Wait, what? I'm okay with Starcross only affecting friendly faction models. Oh, I was saying you're okay with temporal barrier affecting only friendly faction models like that. I'm actually pretty okay with that too. No, but so I, I won't. I won't argue. I won't rage about Captain Haley too much more. But that, that's the only. At this entire document, that's the only one I'm a little not iffy on. I, I'm. I don't know. I. I wish something else could have been done, but I'm again. I'm. I'm not a developer. I'm not. I haven't gone through the, the testing that they did for it, so, and and I've seen my opponent's face whenever I've cast a temporal barrier on the. Outside. I mean, and honestly, it says that Major Victoria Haley has been the whole package for some time. She supplied excellent defensive. That would be the wrong Haley. Yes, yeah, wrong. Oh, that's Haley. Haley. No, nope, wrong. Okay, sorry. It's Captain. Here we go. Yeah, Captain. It said. Temporal Barrier has seen many changes over the years. Captain Victoria Haley has always been a very strong warcaster that runs gunline armies, and a lot of her success is attributed to Temporal Barrier. We found that playing against Haley 1 was incredibly frustrating for certain army styles. This change gives more melee-centric armies, cricks, a much better chance on their approach, and also forces her to play significantly farther forward to apply the speed debuff. We hope that this will make for a more enjoyable gaming experience. What they should have done is take that spell away and put in Polarity Field, called it a day. But instead, what you have is a spell that literally affects all of your opponent's models within 16 inches of her. It debuffs them all without you having to do anything. So they want it to still be really expensive. In order to justify being really expensive, they tacked on some bullshit thing that you're not going to use. That's what happened. Yep, and but it was. I think it was properly pointed. I think even before it was properly costed. Like the people complaining about it being a four. No, it was not properly costed. It took a six. It took sixty percent. Oh, it took almost sixty percent. It's probably a little bit more. She's a seven, seven focus caster, and it took four focus to cast. 
That's a and, lot of focus for one spell. And what did that spell do? That's the crazy part. Hey, just that because it's so true much. speed and defense. Just because it's it on was your up, opponent. And it could be upkept. Yeah, just, I, no, it wasn't upkept. No, it wasn't an upkept. Dude, that would be ridiculous. Okay. No, if it was an upkeep, yeah, no, dude, that would totally be broken. No, it wasn't an upkeep. That would oh, be amazing it was an if it was an upkeep spell, man. Oh, that would be so good. <laughs> like I was telling you before the cast, like fucking me and Polar Bear Cub played a game for like eight hours where I was cloud walling so he couldn't shoot me and then he was temporal barrier so I was moving four inches a turn. Fair and we're like, yeah, yeah, we should go get dinner. Yeah. And come back to this. Yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, uh, we definitely closed the store that night. Thank God one of our friends was one of the ones that was running the store so they let us keep playing. Who he, won? Thank God my ass. He should have put an end to it. <laughs> You won. You won the I don't game. Care. That's a pure victory. <laughs> no one won that game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, that that's where I'm. At. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It's it's it is effectively a feat. Well, it was effectively a feat. Every turn, I had to spend four focus for it. I I'm not a hundred percent aligned with the change, but I also I'm I'm willing to see how it plays out long term. So, all right, so next one, Major Victoria Haley. She got two changes as well. First one is, is she used to have deflection, which was plus two defense against range. She has dropped that, and she has gained force field, which is a it's a cost two self-control area, a range control area, and it's an upkeep spell. And spellcaster does not suffer blast or collateral damage and cannot become knocked down. When an enemy AoE range tax deviates from a point in the spellcaster's control range, after the deviation distance is rolled, you choose the deviation direction. I love Force Field. I think it's a really, really cool spell. Um, with Haley being a 14-16 and then being able to get this, that means that her not being able to, to get hit with AoEs, that was pretty awesome. So even if you uh, can't hit, a lot of times people just throw AoEs at her, drift it onto her, and then get just, just ruin her. But now the fact that she doesn't deal with blaster collateral damage, she can't be knocked down at all. So you can't, you know, throw. Well, you can't throw stuff at her anyways. But um, well, I guess you can't throw any of her models at her to knock her down. And she can choose where the uh, where the AOEs go. That's pretty awesome. It's so do you feel that, as I say, do you feel this was a buff or do you feel this was a nerf? I don't know. I want to see. I, I guess it is a nerf because. You know, everything is now has, you know, everything was effectively minus two defense. Uh, I mean, plus two defense against range. But it changes her now. I, I don't think it's horrible. It's just different. It's a nerf yeah. with a reasonable replacement. Yeah. It's fine. Nice. It's fine. All right. So, future Haley. No, you're Nothing. still on No, we still on major Haley. She has Haley. one more. So, oh, yeah, Time Bomb. She, yep, she also got Time Bomb. So Time Bomb, now it's a model directly hit by Time Bomb, suffers minus two speed and defense for one round. Two big changes from <laughs> this. One, Such it used to nerf. be, yeah, that's a pretty big nerf, because before it was just models hit, so you could drift AoEs on it, now only if the model is directly hit. So that sucks. That's pretty hard. Nope, that's good. And it's still a four cross as well, I believe. No more TKing two models together and fucking them both. Now choir actually matters against Haley. Now um, stealth matters against Haley, although I guess you can run Thorn up. Yeah, you still um, run Thorn up. Spell ward matters. Thank Good gosh. change. So Good change. It's, it's okay, hard. Wait. Fuck Signar. I'm going to start a support group. It's so is this a uh, so this would this would make her unplayable trash, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. One could forums, only hope. Unplayable trash. Worst caster in the faction. Worst caster in the game. Yep. I, right. I, I think she's interesting. I think I think we're gonna see a huge rise in Haley three. That's really what I think. You're gonna see a huge yeah. rise in Haley three now. You are. She is. She is now the best caster in Signar. Yep. I, I would argue that as well. Until Kane three comes out, I think she's probably the best caster Signar has. All right. So last for Signar is Lord C General uh, Striker, um, and I think this is just a a, a reword. They're just uh, cleaning it up where you make impact attack or charge attacks to get in striker's control range. The attack automatically hits and gains additional die on the damage roll. Um, I'm not yeah. too sure what really changed with that. No one plays them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. 
And then uh, for Warjax Miniman, <laughs> Bounding Leap. Um, now, uh, at any effects that prevent charging also prevent this model from using Bounding Leap. Oh, well. I thought they removed that. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. so remove that. All right, so that's good. So it's a little buff for him. Because this literally came up in our game yesterday. Oh, man. I had knocked out the movement on a Minuteman. I was like, can you still leap? And then we pulled up War Room, and it already updated, and we're like, oh. Yeah. I guess so. So, so and then so also, nice yeah, and then also Flackfield. He's not affected by his own Flackfield now, so that's good. Um, so, yep, yeah, so he got two baby buffs. But, and then uh, last thing is the Stormsmith Grenadiers. On a direct hit against enemy model before rolling damage, push models within two inches of this model hit. Two inches directly toward the order you uh, toward it in the order you choose. Again, I think it's just a, a clarification on right on writing. So that was everything for Signar. Yep. So Manoth. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Herman. Now, didn't they say that there was only one change in Manoth? <laughs> they said they were looking at one change. Because there's two here. Because <laughs> there's definitely two, yeah. Oh, man. One of them's on a model that's not even out yet. So oh, we know man. that his ranged weapon has uh, fire type on Eye of Truth. <sighs> How'd you like that Howard Cleaver nerf? Fuck you. Yeah, that was coming. <laughs> yeah. See, I think it's great. You're like, oh, Major Haley and Captain Haley are bullshit, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> oh, no, but, uh, you know, no, Howard Cleaver is great. Fuck <sighs> you, Herman. Fuck you. So good. So fun. I was but humbled I was by my nerf. You? 2011. Huh? I was rocking that shit since 2011. I know. It's fucking bullshit. Oh, that's delicious. Right. Hey, they so, did nerf the battle engine. Did they? Yeah, you can't boost the push damage from the miracle that no one used. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Well, the right. got nerfed. All right, let's talk Ooh. about the... Uh, Let's just move over to the uh, the salt waters. Kador. So right it's at the like top, the we got Irusk. Um, so that's just more or less they were they were doing a little wording changing. This also happens later in Madrak three. It's just they're changing um, the four five or how the four five or six uh, tough rolls are worded. Just so. Yeah, it's just it's not optional. It's tough. Yep. Not optional. Moving on. Okay. Um, so, Karchev. So, they changed They changed his, his feet. They said, replace the first two sentences of the Unearthly Rage Rules text with the following. While in Karchev's control range, models in this battle group gain boosted melee damage rolls, and their melee weapons gain damage-type magicals. So, they took away the boosted-to-hit rolls, which I think that's a pretty reasonable nerf to the Mad Dogs. And I'm sure that they're just going to leave the Mad Dogs alone after that. Yeah. Oh, obviously, yeah. They wouldn't. They wouldn't do anything else to Mad Dogs because they just fixed the problem, right? Yeah, of course. So let's talk about um, Zerkova. Uh, they just did a little bit of changing with the words of Grave Door. They just said the affected models cannot activate. So, so is Grave Door is. Do you have that spell up? Is that the? It's um... the one where she kills a model, can use him as an arc node. Oh. Okay. Apparently, some jackass thought they could activate the model too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Caliban has the same thing. Right. So, so Warjax. So, Behemoth went up in point costs, went up to 25 points, making him once again the most expensive jack in the game. That's Yay. Uh, Whatever. Um, but it, it's still worth it. Still completely worth it. He's a glass um, cannon. Yep. The Berserker's point <laughs> cost. What glass are you talking about? <laughs> Hey man. Maybe with a laser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, the bazooka cost of nine. What was he before? Eight? I think he was eight, yeah. He just went okay. up to nine. The demolisher is shoulder cannons. You change the locations of the... Um, you, his shoulder cannons have been changed to left and right so that if you take out the left or right side, it, it affects them. Okay, that's good. That'd be cool. The Devastator's uh, reign of attack no longer affects the Devastator. No, you missed the destroyer. The point cost got reduced to 14. I think before oh, oh, it was 16. Sorry. Yep, I so, missed that because I was looking good. at Demolisher. That's a really nice change. That is a that's nice a change. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of points to drop. There's a typo here, though. 
There what? is a change to Mad Dog. What? <laughs> Are there's two changes? <laughs> to Mad Dog. They, they made a change to Mad Dog. They increased the cost of Mad Dog to 9, and that they changed the Jury Rigged. <laughs> That's weird. They just took out Jury Rigged? Something that wasn't broken at all? This can't be right. Oh. I'm pretty sure they just gave the Mad Dog the old yeller treatment. That's true. I'm sorry, Gator players. I'm so not. they increased the point cost of Mad Dog to 9, which is up from 8, right? No, 7. Seven. Oh, shit. That is actually pretty substantial. Yeah. But Jury Rigged, they replaced the Jury Rigged Speed Special Rule with Fleet. And so Fleet reads that once per activation, this model can spend one focus point to gain plus two movement when advancing as part of its normal movement, that activation. And the reasoning for this, per development notes, is that, as with the Berserker, the Mad Dog was a steal oh, considering shit. its durability. Because of this, coupled with Jury Rigged, it became a very mobile armor wall that could bully opponents out of zones. Apply some battle groups wide bus to the Mad Dogs, a.k.a. Karchev, and it became a killing machine. The change from Jury Rig to Fleet gives the player a lot less flexibility if they do not want to risk the unstable Cortex role, creating interesting choices inside the game. Man. It's so, like, this is like a snuff film. So I think my favorite comment that I've seen was somebody had recently picked up the Mad Dog Spam, knowing, like we all knew, all knew it was going to get changed. Then it got changed, and the individual was upset about it. How about the fact that that individual never once got to actually play the Mad Dog spam? And that's what sucks, because that individual at least thought he was going to have it until January to play it. That fucking bugs. Okay. Move, moving on. But moving on. So, <laughs> we're not, not going sucks. down that road. So, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of... It's they hard. took that one out and hit it hard. It's hard, because you, you increase it by two points... And like they you Michael ripped Vicks out. Dog. Yeah, they really did. That was just... That, but I, I mean, honestly, I you could still play... You could almost play the same... You would only, in the grand scheme of things, you would only lose at a maximum one to two Mad Dogs. You could still play almost as many Mad Dogs as you were, minus one or two, without, even with the two. Without the feet to help them hit their Mat 5, and they're not going to hit Right, but I'm saying it doesn't invalidate purchases and the fact that you are not, you know, unable to use all of them, you know? No, it invalidates purchases in the they're not useful in common sense. <sighs> right. That doesn't invalidate yeah. purchase, though. No, I mean, they still exist. It still exists. It's still... I, 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 I wish they would have kept Jury Rig in. I would have been fine with the increase to, to Matt 9, because if they would have kept Jury Rig in, they still could have... Uh, Spent that focus point to boost at least an attack roll. I guess my I guess my whole point in everything was the fact that um, you know I always look at it as there must be there's got to be something else on the horizon that they knew that was going to make this even worse. So why is why does why does that let them why does that make them blow up? Because they have a shitty cortex. No, but I thought uh, I thought the Mad Dog and all that whole. That whole in the berserk and stuff like that, they could spend one focus point and not blow up. I thought that was their whole thing because everyone gets a free focus. You don't have to spend it, right? But yeah, I'm but I think that's what they're saying. They're they're saying you couldn't do the other stuff, and because what was happening is that with the free points and stuff, they were able to do the stuff and avoid blowing up. Now, okay, in order okay. to do that, they have to spend the point to either choose, hey, we might blow up. So it, 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 it makes it more of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's more of like a, an offhand. Like, you could, you could still do something like this, but you have a chance of blowing up. You don't get both. You don't get your okay. cake and you get to eat okay. it too. You yeah, because I put up on the table, it says if you spend more than one focus point, roll a d6. Right. Okay. No, now it's just equal to any activation in which you spent one or more focus. No, no, no. D6. If you spend more than one focus. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So if they could sp still spend their one focus point to use fleet, but then they can't boost any attacks or make any additional damage or make any additional attacks unless they want to blow up. Oh, you're never going to see him again, so... Sad. That's sad. All right. I don't know, it could be fun. It's a good thing they're in a multi-kit. 
But on. <laughs> so Marauders, um, they did a little bit change to their siege weapon. Um, so they now gain an additional die to its damage roll against huge based models. Good change. Um, and the Grenadier, I mean the Spriggan's grenade launchers are now tied to its left and right arm. So I just want to go back to the siege weapon really quick. But, really, really quick. So they changed, I know there was, I believe at least I know three models that had uh, a, 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 the siege weapon and they replaced the text. One of them was the Marauder, the other one was the uh, the um, Mercenary Battle Engine, and both their text got replaced. The third person was Brisbane Siege. He had yeah. the Siege Weapon um, ability, and that wasn't changed at all. So let, let me riddle you this, Polar Bear Dick Cub. <laughs> yes. Would that happen to be a caster that has armor? It does. And can further boost his damage? Uh, yeah, no, and I, I, I'm, what I'm wondering is, and that's why I'm, I'm just wondering, is I know if, if they would have changed it for Siege, it would probably break the game in terms of him being able to just wipe off, wipe out freaking uh, uh, huge base models in a turn. What's easily. the power of his rocket? 14, fair and balanced. So that would be 28 damage in one shot on yeah. average. Yeah, okay. They got a lot more than 28 damage. 28 boxes. That's actually exactly half of a Stormwall. That's fine. One shot. I'm okay with that. I'm just, I'm wondering what they're going to do for him, because he still has a combat engineer ability. Where They're going to give him the combat engineer ability. That does nothing. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's not fine. I would like go, to see go something. Go Moshar. It does things against Moshar. There you go. Enjoy. Get, no, it, yeah, okay. The one <laughs> instant. Win, Get out of here. Does. I, I, I do think it's. I think it's interesting that they they've replaced those, and then they kind of just they're not sure what to do with siege. Is my understanding is not sure what necessarily to do with that ability. Well, they can leave it there and not touch it because they already play tested it the other way, and it took about thirty seconds to figure out that I'm completely correct. Well, I would just like to see something done because when they gave them that ability before, and is when they still structures still had had uh, armor and house and stuff like that. And now they don't. It's a weird ability to be on this card. It is, but you can still play it against Moshar. So, this is a character-driven role-playing tabletop game. You need to grow into character. the fact that Moshar is going to be a force to rec be reckoned with. You're right. And He's, Siege is all we've got. He, that is the only reason why Moshar is not running the tournament scene right now, is because Siege is keeping his ass in check. Exactly. I mean, that beat is just hey. OP. I will blow up your fucking salt pillars. So what happened? I mean, I mean, honestly, what happened when we when when they worked on uh, you know Isla's site? You know, Wormwood blew up. So Mokshar, he's he's just sitting there waiting. He's <laughs> like, don't you worry, guys. I got. I got it. this. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they decreased the cost of Winter Guard infantry because riflemen were just a better choice for the same points. So they are trying to make the rifle guard, I mean the winter guard infantry, um, you know, a feasible option. Yep. Now you can get three rockets in your list for cheaper. Yay. That is their use. All right, next one, Joe. If a unit, so he got changed. Instead of getting an additional uh, attack, additional diet attack, he gets plus two to attack. It's so obvious that it almost doesn't need comment. Yeah. Yeah, that's I a mean, good I'm more than happy to comment, but it doesn't need it. <laughs> I'm wondering how we should do with the rest of the cast. We're already 45 minutes in, and we've only gone through three factions. Let's we just keep going. Up. Let's just keep going. All right. All Chris. right, so bounce to the next page. All right, so we've got Lich Lord Asphyxius, who was, I can almost agree this, went from one of the strongest tournament casters in Cricks to being pretty low on the totem pole um, in the edition changes. He had a good run. He did. Six years. Not bad. It's more but than they, six years, because he even was on a run for a Mark two, a Mark one. True. So, I mean, they changed him. They um, Caustic Mist, they changed. So they changed the duration from upkeep to round. No, sorry, from Upkeep to round. Yeah, upkeep to round. So now you can drop more than one. Yep. And now they are 
A model entering or ending its activation in the AOE suffered the corrosion continuous effect. And then they replaced his feet, the first sentence, they put return up to D3 plus 5 destroyed small or medium base grunts that were part of a friendly faction unit to play, placing them completely within 3 inches of Asphyxius. You see, he has exactly the same feet as High Reclaimer, except for the part where High Reclaimer stuff stays in play and can be large based. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, and same feet. It doesn't feet. have to be placed within 3 inches. Exactly. Yep. So, so also fair. changed the Corruptor. They just said that um, a part of Psycho Venom, the affected model, cannot activate. That's pretty awesome. That's changed. And That's the, a good change. And then when it comes to Crix, they decided to bring a little bit of Mark II back to Crix by making them great again and giving them tough. Eh. That's, <laughs> not, that's not good enough. I don't know. I think with their with their abilities that they gained in Mark Three, where they can bring back a bunch of their guys and tough, I think I mean that can get pretty pretty crazy. No, they're gonna get blown off the table still. Brute Thralls, <laughs> Brute Thralls got a little bit of change. They gained Shield Guard. That's an interesting one, I guess. It is an interesting one. I think it's it's curious for me because it's like now you have to you take a unit of mechanic thralls in order to take the brute thralls. Makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah, it's kind of like you take a unit of winter guard to take the rockets. So, yeah, I don't know. That's one that I can't really judge on paper. You have to see it on the table. Um, Revenant crew got a joke of a change. It didn't really. They got uh, dropped a little bit um, points wise. So, min unit is 9, max unit is 16. Well, hang on, Mr. Positive. Everything is useful. I didn't say use. I'm, I'm not saying... I'm just saying it's not game-changing for them. Like, it's not like they went from bottom of the barrel to top of the barrel. You know, they definitely... It's a change, and it could affect It could affect seeing them more. I just don't really feel like with some of the other options and cricks, we're going to see a lot of the Revenant crew. No. Um... Next page, Scarlock Commander. Now, this was a big one. Scarlock Commander now um, is a point cost of three, but he has tactics advanced deployment. So you could put him into your Banes, or you could put him into your Mechanic Thralls, or you could put him into your Revenant crew, and they now... Um, he only goes with the uh, Bio Thralls and... Oh, Bio Thralls and Mechanic Thralls. Mechanic Thralls. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, not Revenant Crew. I was just reading it. Um, Bane Thralls and Ball Thralls, and then they get advanced deployment. So Me now you're... Not what Bane did thralls. I say? Damn it. Mechanic Thralls. One of those so you're is Shield a Guard. With Dark Shroud. Shield Guard is, is now advanced deployed. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point I'm trying to make. That's an interesting one. I mean, I, I can... That's another one that's really hard to gauge, you know, just on paper. Um, you can use your... Shield guards to help your arc nodes get up to the table, help your jacks get up to the table. Uh, I'm not so sure about with the bio thralls, what you really want to do there. Do you Maybe. think that this is going to really change, like um, you know, the the matchups for Cricks? Because I know they were having a lot of trouble with gun lines. Um, do you no. think that this is enough of a change? No, because they were using statistical raiders before, and they're going to use statistical raiders after. So, mm. do you think with the shield guard it might help them out? Well, the Raiders are already immune to blast, and they're paying the butt to shoot. Uh, the Shield Guard is probably the more interesting change in the advanced deployment, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm open to being wrong. I haven't seen a Crix player in six months. No, I saw one. I did see one. So I saw a Crix player once in six months. That's pretty Come bad. Up. Come up here to yeah. my store. You can play You can play Nablus. He's still playing Crix. Yeah, that's true. I've seen two. I've seen two Crix players in six months. I saw him, like, three months ago. <laughs> All right, hey, so for the rest of the factions, I guess until we get to the ones that you guys play, why not instead of just going through each one, let's talk about the overall changes and how we think about them. Just so we okay. can kind of go on Wraith tra engine, track a little Wraith bit. Engine, Wraith Engine went down in point cost. He He's now the 15. He's still um, unplayable trash. That's still pretty know. awesome. No, he's unplayable trash. Retribution, uh, retribution, uh, Ossian lost Dead Eye and gained fortune. So that's oh not, my god! That's not what four upkeeps he has. 
Yeah. That's pretty rough. I'm kidding. It's totally fine. It doesn't matter at all. Because he's just going to take a Hypnos, he'll throw a Fortune on it, he'll go, he'll pop your caster for minus three defense using Ghost Shot. Morals will come in, they'll pop your caster for Paralyze, and then they'll shoot him to death on the feet turn. Probably no, not. dude, I read on the forums, he's unplayable trash now. Unplayable trash! See, the okay, thing is, when I say, like, the battle engine's unplayable trash, it is unplayable trash. This Ossian's totally fine. Doesn't matter. Also, you can use Fortune on melee now, so you can have those uh, Halpadiers go fuck some shit up. Viros got a change, too. Uh, Dawn Lord to his feet. They just uh, changed a little bit of the wording for flank with him. Yeah, you can't. It has to be a trooper model. Yep. A warrior model. Okay. W once again, the uh, Ret Battle Engine gets another um, errata. Um, still making it not good as they bring it down to point cost 16. We yeah. actually had an interesting conversation in the Matter of Pact on. If you left the rules all the same, what would it take for me to actually start bringing, like, a Meat Thresher? And I said 13 points. Jesus so, Christ, that's cheap. Given the how fact that... How many points is it? At, it's what, 21 points? It's currently 18. 18. 19. 18, 19, somewhere there. Because it's one point more than the um, War Wagon. Yeah, so it's 19 points. Okay. And to give you an example, a Warhog is 15 points. So... No, it's not super cheap. It's what they need to do in order to actually get battle engines taken, because if you can't boost, you can't do enough damage, and then, yeah. Jesus Christ. All right. Convergence. That's where I would consider it. I'm not, I'm not even saying I would take it. I'm saying that's where I would consider it. That's ridiculous. So we'll let you fangirl over your cock. So super excited that Lucant picked up Deceleration, drop Deflection, um, because let's be serious, Boosting a uh, defense 10 up to a defense 12, Jack, not really impressive. But boosting a armor 20 conservator up to an armor 22 against range of magic attack damage rolls, pretty damn awesome. Super excited about changing the look on. I think that does a lot to him. It, it also fits his theme of armor. Exactly. It fits his theme of armor perfectly. Like He's going to do a lot more and with the shield guard and all that stuff. That, that helps him out so much. That's what he had beforehand. I'm really, really happy they put that back on his card. Perforators, uh, I believe they reduced their point cost by 2. So they went from 18 down to 16. Uh, still on the fence with them. I'm not sure if that's really the only thing that they needed. They are still really expensive for not doing as much as I'd like them to do. And the uh, Enigma Foundry. Now, uh, its point cost was reduced from 5 to 4. Again, I feel the same thing about them. I'm not sure if I'm still going to take the Enigma Foundry. I might now, but the recursion game has changed a lot from Mark II to Mark III, so not not really sure if that excites me enough about the Foundry. I was supposed to make a comment to um, to Kevin in today's cast um, from LeClaire saying, Kevin, recursion is a bit dead, um, but he's not here today, so... <laughs> I, I can pretend to be him and cry. Okay. Cry. So, cry. Gaston, recursion is dead. And it's not coming back. Leave it dead. It might. You could recursion, recursion. That's true. You could recursion, How recursion. Epic. That would be so, like, mind blowing. It's no. Inception. It's. No, it would be Inception. Recursion. Recursion. Yeah. I don't know. So, no, I, I don't opinion. know. So, I, I'm a little sad about that, but whatever. You know what? That, that's, that's how they want. Recursion to be going forward, so I accept that. That's just not how I want to play it. So well, all fine. these changes really tell you something about balancing the game too. Where if you knock the points down and it doesn't have a use, we still don't give a shit. Yep, that's true. We've heard that now multiple times. And also uh, ionization. So now they're created. So it, they have a special rule, prime pound flux, which means that the prime axiom can no longer spawn them out as well. So that kind of stinks, uh, but yeah, it is a nerf. Yeah. That, so, that, one question I do have about the Enigma Foundry. If it had gone down two points, do you think that it, that would have changed, like, your want to use it? If they had went by, down by two points and I could bring two for six, I, I might use that then. Because then I would literally just use it as, all right, I'm refilling units that I am not going to, like, put up. Because right now, for four points, for two of them, I could bring a unit still. For eight points, I get, I, or I can almost. I, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper than bringing an entire unit of uh, obstructors. 
That's so like I'm, the battle engine. You knock it down so it's so cheap, now he'll consider it. Yeah, it and that's still it. has no purpose. He'll just consider it now. If if it, it was if it was knocked down to three points, I I'd, I'd really consider it because then I think it would be it it would probably make its point back within the, their points back within two rounds, which that's what I'm looking for. Is it going to make how how many rounds is it going to take for me to feel like I justified bringing it as opposed to an entire a, a whole another unit of small base models? So, cool. all right, Mercs. Core. Yep, so Constance changed. Uh, oh, no one cares. Yeah, yeah no, hey, it, it <laughs> went from uh, AOE, Radiant Tomorrow, uh, went from self to an AoE to control, which is, oh, sorry, it, it, from an AoE, nothing to control. So it looks like it, it increased something. I don't know. I don't play. Kind of. I don't even know what that spell does. Moving it on. does something. Oh, Grimbo Core. Uh, oh, Grimbo the Core. Basher. Gordon Basher. Oh, my God. <laughs> He is no longer affected by Flackfield. Moving on. <laughs> um, Ogren Bokor. Thank you. I can take him now. Yay. Yep. That's actually pretty big. He's a That's, that's yeah. awesome. I don't have a list so, for him, but I know when I take him, I will not regret it. <laughs> Could you take him? I don't remember. Could you take him in Cricks before? No. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, you could. So he's... You can take him in everybody now. No, you can't take him in Protectorate. Good. Really? They have too much fucking Shield Guard anyways. Did you have a lot of Shield Guard? They wouldn't take well, him anyway. Well, you can take him in every minion now, so that's good. That's really good. All right. Battle Engine. So the Siege Crawler. This is what I think is interesting. They changed Siege Weapon. Um, he's going to be affected if he gets hit by his own AoE now. He's gonna, it's going to hurt. Okay. Well, he better be he better he better plan his shots a little bit better. Yeah. Womp womp. All right. Trolls. Let's just skip skip this part. <laughs> Come on, nah, man. Well, Let's I, talk about the uh, desperate I, hour. I'm completely good with I I I'm gonna make this known right now. I am one hundred percent, hundred and ten percent okay with every change made in trolls. Okay. I'm I'm fine with it. I am completely good because I I believe that they were needed. So going into this, so Madrak 2 took a hit. He is no longer affected by his own feet. That's huge. I think it was... It You're is, it fine is. with all the changes to trolls because 60% of them were buffs. Well, even... But the one that we did lose <laughs> is a big one. We lost We lost the Silver Surfer. You know, he lost not... the dude who was so obviously over the top that a blind 6th grader could have figured out that this was coming. Uh... Say, we've been saying that about Haley 2 for fucking years, okay? And she somehow went under the radar for a long time. So maybe we were just p praying. That's true. Maybe they just confused the two blues. Maybe they were just like, oh, those troll bloods over there. That blue They're is blue. the... That uh, blue looks awful. That blue, blue looks is fine. bad. <laughs> so I, I think it's interesting because of all the change. So we had talked about this on the cast a couple months ago where I had made the joke where, P, you know, they're going to ask PP where did... Uh, or, PB's going to ask everybody, where did Madrak touch you on the doll? <laughs> and uh, it was, um, this wasn't as big of a change. This wasn't as hard of a change as I thought it would be. I think it was a I, really good change. I think it balances I was them. really worried. Uh, you know, you look at any of our earlier casts where we are talking about possible changes, and you will hear me say, this sucks, like they're going to ruin you know, Madrak too. And honestly, like, it's a huge change, but I don't believe that it, like, yes, hey. Madrak is no longer going to be able to walk in and kill your entire army and get to your caster and then kill your caster. It's hey, not hey, just all about him. There's more Rattas that will be coming in the future. <laughs> they can still screw him up. Don't worry. Gaston, You're such a damn the, Debbie. Right, I'm going to tell you... Open play testing, I'm actually going to I'm going to tell you goal. right now. I'm going to tell you right now. The Meat Thresher will never be 13 points, so suck on that. Yeah. Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> it's a wonderful model that's going to sit in my closet but um, no so the only thing that I think that I feel could have been a better change and may have slowed down the salt mines is if they had changed the wording in his feet to say that um, that all of his um, that basically he gains berserk 
that Berserk is friendly faction and Overtake is friendly faction non-Warcaster. That's the only thing that I could think that might have made it a little bit better, just because of the fact that Madrak still could have gotten into a group, killed that group, and been done. You know? And mm -hmm. it just means don't cluster your model super close. It's no different than what used to happen with Madrak 1 in Mark 2, where he used to run up, pop feet, gets to make an attack against basically everything, you know? See, my so, plan A was to leave Madrak 1 as Madrak 1 and leave Madrak 2 as Madrak 2. But apparently we can't do that. We had different plans for that. <laughs> but no, so, yeah, so he just can't, he, he doesn't gain his Berserk and he doesn't gain an Overtake anymore. Still great spell list, still super hard to kill, you know, he he's good. I, I'm happy with it, so. They changed Madrak 3. They, once again, just like Irusk, they just changed the wording of their feet with the four, five, or six tough rolls. They increased, they increased the mat on the Night Troll from five to six, so he can kill a lot of dudes, So and it makes it a little bit easier to kill dudes, so I like him. Good change. Good and change. They, they decreased the point cost of Trollkin Sluggers, and they increased their rat finally to rat six. So making they were them a five before? They were. Okay. That's fine. No problem, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So all in all, I was really happy with the troll bloods changes. So circle. Um, Wormwood, there was a big change there. They um, changed his um, feet to s from, com from control range to command range. Yeah, that's not the nerf I was looking for. And then... It's a step in the right direction, at least. Yeah. I mean, it worked for it worked for Harvey. The that's problem true. was, is that Wormwood... Um, what's the meat puppet? Cassius? Yeah. Cassius. Cassius. He's got a fertilizer on... And he can fertilize friendly models, so you can just make a forest wall every turn anyway. And then get teleported back. So this actually doesn't really fix that problem. Well, you know, it's at least they tried something, so we'll see. And, you know, and now with this open play testing, we can make it more clear to people that that's an issue. Yeah, that's true. So, World Warden, his strength went up to power and strength 16, so, because his strength went up to 12. That's good. Um, World Ward's arcane strike increased to 12. It's fine. Um, sentry Stone and Mannequins, um, they replaced the first two sentences with Wellspring with, if there are fewer than three Fury points on the Sentry Stone during your maintenance phase, place D3 Fury points on it. This model can have up to three Fury points at any time. If there are fewer than three Mannequin Grunts in this unit in play during your maintenance phase, put one Mannequin Grunt into play in formation. That's the change that basically everyone's asking for. So. Yeah. High five. So thank you. So, I mean, good on PP for listening. Mm -hmm. yep. Shifting stone speed change to <laughs> line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'll never find them now. <laughs> oh, my God. And so that's all we got for circle. Scorn seems to be a little bit uh, free of changes, so... We'll have an entire Scorn <laughs> up, so we go through the 80-plus changes to Scorn pretty well, it's soon. Like, um, it's like Shik said, they're already balanced. Hey, they were balanced, just not in the right way. <laughs> they right. were balancing on something. Uh, I think man, it was the edge of the trash PP. can. Somebody so, should moderate PP. Get out of here. Legion! <laughs> Afflictor. So, well, what about Increase the defense. Didn't oh, Bane? Bane. Yep. A comes before B. Warlocks come before Warbeasts. Bethane got the same change to the flank rule that... Um, who was it earlier? Got. Viros. Uh, yep. So her and Vi Viros got the same change. It was just some wording. Okay. Um, the Afflictor defense went up to 13. Still um, not get used. The Probably Light not. Wasps, um, they now gain a plus one cumulative bonus to melee attack and damage rolls for each other model in this unit with the target of this model's melee attack in its melee range. That's just a wording fiddliness. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just moves that around a little bit. 
Um, Zuriel went up to power and strength 16 and a strength of 11. That's a nice change. Hellmouth. You're, you're skip, you skipped the soldier. Where? Oh, I did. Holy oh shit. my god, you This is a terrible. good change. This is a really good change. The Nephilim sh soldier gained um, brutal charge. That's, yeah, that's really that good. That is fantastic. That's awesome. So, you know, right out the gate, the first thing that people are going to do with this errata is spam soldiers. <laughs> you think with so? E Abbey. Yeah, I've already seen lists for it. It's like E Abbey and 10 soldiers. Jesus Christ. All right, Hellmouth. So they gain Solus. Is that a big change for them gaining no. Solus? No one cares. All right. Get, get to the good one. So Tendrils. Replace yes. the first Tendrils of Tendrils with the following. If there are fewer than three Tendrils in this unit and played during your maintenance phase, you can put one Tentacle in to play in formation. Wow. Yes, thank you. Finally. So before, you used to be able to put th all of them back into play? No, before you could kill them and pop them back during your activation. Oh, fuck. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so instead of rear attack, now they have back attack. Uh, so, they, uh, yeah, they can back attack. This model can target models into its back arc. Okay, that's awesome. That's good. So, two pretty good changes for it. That's awesome. It's reasonable. It is. All right. Minions, why don't you take it away? <laughs> oh, man. The Gator of Posse got decreased by a point to go be 10 points and 17 points. Yeah, that's exciting. So, you know, on the vein of um, there are no useless models, we did find a use for them. <laughs> uh, Gator and Posse are excellent for proxying gun wars. Oh, my God. Gator and Posse. That's hilarious. If you think that's the problem with them, then... <laughs> what do you mean? They did so say they what, were would you, what would you say is the problem then? Uh, like, I'm not saying that there's not a problem with them. I'm just curious what your take on the problem is, Gaston. They need to be completely redesigned from the ground up. They're squishy. They're difficult to deliver. They don't hit accurately. They don't hit. I mean, the Path 13s is nice, but they don't hit that hard. They literally can maybe find a spot with Helga if you're bored. I mean, like I was playing against. Um, I was actually playing against Maylock. He sits some posse down on the table, and I'm like, that is fantastic. Here's my invictors, 20 points of your army. Thanks for the free shit. It's done. Oh. Like, one turn, they all just died. They're terrible. <laughs> they got hit way too hard, and the reasoning for it was they're like, well, they're so much better than everyone else's medium-based infantry that, you know, we didn't want them to get taken over everyone else's, so they just made them flat out worse than everyone else's, and then they made everyone else's worse, so they got hit twice, sort of. Yay! Good. Don't play posse. Yay! Posse. Alright, well. Um, Alt-Nashley. Alt-Nashley's point cost went up to six. Okay. Mm. Don't like that. And, and Lanissa's point cost went up to four. Don't like that either. The, th the, thing of, of the thing about it is that solos in this edition, the way everything is structured and the way army list building is structured, is they're too expensive. They are they're really expensive. expensive. They are super Alt expensive. I mean, up until this change, uh, was it Iris is the cost of a mad dog. So I'd have much rather you just yank the Grievous Wounds off of Alton Ashley and knock them down to a 4 than, and left him as a sniper than bump him up to a 6 to leave Grievous Wounds there. And Lenissa was totally fine at 3 points. They can go fuck off. I know. This, yeah, this, that, that was a change that really surprised me because I did not see that being much of an issue. Right like, it, it didn't surprise me. But my right. thing about Family. it is, is like, is, don't you want, I mean, don't you want a model that, you know, is good? Like, I understand he's being, she's being taken in almost every list, but it wasn't a bad thing. Like, it, it, it helped people fix issues with changes that Privateer Press has not put forward yet. Yeah, I mean, the other reason why she, they bumped her up to four is Black Clad Wayfarers have Hunter's Mark in their four points. Yep. Oh. So realistically, you, I mean, they have other abilities that she doesn't have. So I just I think solos in the game are overcosted. All right. So um, that's just my view. No, no, it's 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 good. All right. I think so. It got, took me like five minutes to fix my lists. Then so. we've got theme forces. Which yeah, was... they they let you take bone storms with Midas, and um, <laughs> they fucked over Kingmakers pretty bad. Yeah, you can't knock your own shit down. That sucks. But 
otherwise, the only other change I would like to talk about that came out with this errata is the one that we've mentioned throughout this entire cast, but we never actually talked about, um, and we could just make a quick thing, is that Privateer Press, if you haven't gone and read all the changes with this errata document, the errata had a lot of changes, but the way that Privateer Press is talking about handling um, development going forward is a major change. So going forward, um, Privateer Press is going to be looking to the community, a.k.a. us, to help them with... Um, you know, developing the stuff. Um, but due to this, um, m a lot of models are not going to be, have their cards included um, in the boxes with them, but um, they will be offering now free PDFs with all the the rules, I mean, with the cards and stuff. And um, now you can talk about them on the, fact, on the forum. So... That's awesome. Your guys' thoughts? Um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, Herman just actually jumped off, so he's not part with us anymore. Oh, did he um, really? Yeah. He didn't um, even say bye. He sent a text. Oh. Um, no, I, I'm really excited about it. I, I think it's a really good change. I, I really like it. Um, sad that we're not going to get, like, the, hey, surprise on the rules now, but we'll at least get a glimpse, and I think it's a, it's a, it's changing the right direction. There's been a, a lot of concerns with how, with how Mark III has gone so far. And I think this is a way to restore faith with Privacy Press. I definitely don't want to say that people heard it here first because we definitely talked about this last cast, but they definitely heard about it here first, people. We, <laughs> yeah. we, <laughs> definitely. we definitely we definitely spoke about it before we knew. Yep. And I'm super excited about that because I think that that keeping secrets is um, is not a good and fair game. I agree. But with that, um, this was our longest cast by far. Heck yeah, over 110 minutes. 100, yeah, 110 minutes at this point. So um, this is not going to be a often thing, people. Oh, sorry, this no, might be something. This might be something we focus on when Aratus come out or other super major big changes. But um, yeah. yeah, so I I definitely want to thank Gaston for coming on to the cast with us, even I though knew. he had to peace out. Yeah, he had to peace out. I'm sad that. Uh, Doubt Ark, Kevin couldn't be here, but that's fine. All right, so with that being said, I want to thank you guys for listening to another episode of Turn Extension. Have a happy holiday.